The other day, Netflix dropped a trailer for their new film adaptation of Death Note, and a billion people rushed to Twitter to ask me what I thought about it. With the new wave of big-budget anime adaptations for film and television, I've been meaning to branch out and try my hand at a spot of trailer analysis. I missed the boat with Ghost in the Shell's complete and utter betrayal of its source material, but this Death Note adaptation gives me another chance to get good and angry and rake in those outrage views. Except... I kind of think it could be good. At least from a directorial standpoint, what little camera work we've seen is striking, and it has a dark pseudo-horror tone that I think is well-suited to the story. The film's director, Adam Wingard, previously worked on the excellent You're Next, as well as the surprisingly not-crap Blair Witch reboot, so this guy knows his horror. And the actors they've attached are pretty solid as well. Willem Dafoe as Ryuk, in particular, is a stroke of casting genius, but Lakeith Stanfield kills it in Atlanta as Darius, and I'm excited to see his portrayal of L here. I've heard good things about him in Get Out as well, but I haven't seen it yet, so I can't really comment on that. And while Nat Wolf isn't quite as perfect for light, uh, Turner, I guess, as a young Zac Efron could have been, he's proven himself to be a talented actor in the John Green movies, and I'm willing to give him a shot. In regards to the other concerns related to the casting choices, well, they don't really bother me the same way that they do in Ghost in the Shell. Death Note's plot is not inherently tied to Japan in the same way that Motoko Kusanagi's story is intertwined with that of Neo Tokyo, and the producers said from the outset that they were trying to create an American take on the franchise. And honestly, with four live action and animated adaptations for film, television, and even stage set in its native Japan, Japan, moving it to America is kind of the only way that they can tackle Death Note without being redundant. Although it would be kind of nifty if they produced the musical version stateside instead. Anyway, Light as a character is supposed to be a child of privilege, the kind of person that would fly under the radar of the cops. And if the movie is set in Seattle, then it just makes sense for him to be white. And while a lot of anime adaptations fail because the producers don't get or care about the source material, the Death Note anime is already a big earner for Netflix. They know that their audience already appreciates the original series, so it's in their best interest to maintain that same appeal in their movie. So there's a lot of reason to be excited, or at least hopeful, for this Death Note adaptation, but not a lot of it comes across in this trailer. They're not putting their best foot forward here, and a few things about the trailer are really worrying. Now, this is a conventionally solid trailer for a conventional thriller. It catches your attention with a few quick flashes of freaky nonsense before cranking up the intensity as the industrial background music gets heavier and more intense itself. Conventional wisdom says that this will probably put asses in theater seats, so to speak, but I don't know that it really does a good job of selling or even teasing the actual appeal of Death Note. I don't think that's necessarily the fault of the movie itself. I suspect that it's just bad advertising. The Netflix trailer team seems to drop the ball a lot for everything that's not superhero related. Just look at the abysmal trailer for Dear White People. So. What does this trailer do wrong, and what details can we glean about the movie from it? Let's go through it shot by shot and see. I really like the opening shot. The image of the Death Note falling to Earth is a strong point to start on. The note starts its descent within the frame, implying that it just appeared in the air rather than falling from further up, and this shot of light as it falls to the ground is pretty captivating. It seems like he's looking up at something else, and the notebook only catches his attention as it's about to hit the ground. The snap of his head is a very effective way of pulling our attention from the book to him, and I love the soft thud cueing the cut to black. It's not overly loud, but it has a heavy impact amid the relative silence of the rest of the trailer. 
That said, I'm not sure it's a good idea to have the note drop on light while he's sitting alone on what I assume are his school's grounds. The way that the anime starts with him catching the notebook falling out of the corner of his eye while he's in class and then going to pick it up at break is so dense with meaning. For starters, the fact that he's looking out the window enough to catch it randomly falling hints at his boredom with day-to-day -day life and the fact that he thinks he's above the rest of his class to the point where he doesn't even have to pay attention. Finding the note with tons of other people around plays to the idea that the holder of the note could have been anyone. It's also important that he dismisses the note out of hand as a sick joke at first, and I love the way that as he walks away from it, he steps out of the darkness before being pulled back in. You know, maybe I should cover a scene or two from the anime at some point. It's exceptionally well directed. Anyway, the focus of the camera and the way that this scene is staged kind of implies that light was chosen, which would go against the spirit of the original and especially Ryuk's character if that were the case. But then this scene is four brief shots in a teaser trailer, and it's doubtful that it'll be played this simply or this quickly in the actual movie. As a side note, I'm also not really on board with how banged up and dirty the notebook is shown to be. I like the clean, ageless appearance that the Death Note has in the anime. It gives it a sort of disconcerting, otherworldly vibe, and the weathering on the cover here takes away from that a bit. And on the subject of nitpicking the implications of small scenes, this hallway flash cut seems to imply that this will be set in high school rather than college, which could also compromise the integrity of the movie a bit, but that's all dependent on how they write it. I'm also not sure that the hallway really gels with this frame of Ryuk in a neon lit doorway. Like, it's cut as though he's supposed to be popping up to spook us, but it moves so fast and is so out of place with everything around it that it seems more like a bad subliminal message. I don't know, this cut just seems weird. The shot of an invisible Ryuk grabbing an apple off the table next to the Death Note is a lot better. It's menacing and spooky in a way that's a bit more in keeping with the tone of Death Note, but it's a little distracting that it's clearly just being knocked off instead of grabbed. Fishing wire is a thing, effects guys. The Netflix titles are just kinda there. I'm not a huge fan of this font, although I do like how in the later transition from based on to the international phenomenon, the O-N in international ends up in the same place as the on in based on. It's a subtle detail that makes the cut flow just a little bit better. Anyway, the next three shots show the setting, Seattle, and then the two most important other characters, Mia Sutton and L. Mia is this film's version of Misa Amane, who appears to be a cheerleader. And again, I'm not sure how I feel about that. On the one hand, I can see why they might have felt it's a little unrealistic for Light to date a pop star, and idols aren't a thing in America the same way that they are in Japan, but I feel like Misa just being a popular girl may be a bit too low-key. Misa's fame is an important part of the original story. She's a threat to Light because she's stupid and always has the public eye on her, and a big part of her origin story is related to her having a stalker. I don't think that they should ditch that aspect of her character entirely. There are plenty of kinds of mid-tier fame that are reasonable for a Seattle-based teenager to attain. Hell, the story would work if she was a popular YouTube vlogger or something. I'm just saying, Netflix, everything you do should be about YouTubers. As for L, this is all we see of him, just looking weird and mysterious as he walks down a hallway. I can't really pass judgment on half a second of an establishing shot, although from the red coloration, it seems like he's walking toward the crime scene that we see later in the trailer. On that note, the scene of Light reading and then deciding to use the Death Note is way too short and straightforward in this trailer, but I'm almost certain that it's just a matter of how it's cut. He just reads that the Death Note can kill people and immediately says, all right, let's try this shit out. I'd be surprised and disappointed if the show played it like this. One thing I do like about this shot is that there's an apple on the desk next to the Death Note representing temptation. That's a detail that comes up a lot in the anime and I'm glad that they included it here. Everything around light is shrouded in darkness except for his desk and the object of his focus, the notebook. He's also depicted as being very distant from the rest of the world which is shown through slatted blinds in a tiny window behind him. And of course it's raining because this is Seattle. When 
light goes to write in the notebook, the image is boxed in by what looks like specimen jars, further narrowing the focus and creating the implication that he's experimenting. I've got to say, on the whole, I really like the way this film is shot. Light putting pen to paper triggers a flurry of action scenes, which is the other big complaint I've seen about this trailer. It seems like Light is using more flamboyant methods of announcing Kira's presence to the world as he kills people, rather than just killing everyone with heart attacks. Also, just as an aside, isn't it kind of weird that he calls himself Kira when he lives in America? Maybe this version of Light is a weeb. In this sequence, we see Light passionately making out with Mia, crashing into fences as the cops chase him, and finally dangling from a helicopter that's crashed into a collapsing Ferris wheel. This is all pretty over the top and has fans a little worried. Death Note is, at its heart, a psychological thriller. And obviously, I understand the concern, because nobody wants Death Note turning into an action movie. But you have to remember that from bus hijackings to police chases involving helicopters to eating potato chips, the original series had more than its share of big, dumb moments, and this isn't too far out of step with that. As long as the film is mostly slow and psychological, I'll be fine with a little bit of Hollywood nonsense to punctuate the big story beats. And I think there's reason to believe that it will be fairly slow-paced and psychological. This trailer is cut very fast, but most of the shots that we see in it look to be pretty slow and drawn out. The camera is steady and moves gradually even when the action ramps up. And a lot of the shots in this last montage look like they're taken from slow scenes, like Elle investigating a crime scene that just happened to be visually interesting. That's why I think that this could be a case of a bad trailer for a good movie. Rather than a trailer for an action movie, this feels like somebody decided to cut an action movie trailer out of a drama because they thought that it would be more attention-grabbing that way. Death Note is primarily about Light's descent into the depths of evil and the intense mind games between him and L. And this teaser doesn't even attempt to touch on either of those things. Its sole purpose is to convey the idea of what the Death Note is and hint that things will go crazy after it's used. This trailer isn't for the nerds and weebs who can rattle off the rules from all 66 how to use it pages of the Death Note. It's for the plebs who think that a Shinigami is a type of motorcycle. Because we're a captive audience, we're gonna watch this thing one way or another, either to see how bad it is, or to enjoy it if it turns out to be good. They're trying to market Death Note to a general audience here, and in doing so, they're probably making the movie seem a lot more generic than it actually will be. The biggest thing that makes me think that is the final shot of Light talking to Ryuk, where Ryuk asks, shall we begin? It's cut so that we never get a good look at Ryuk like he's a monster in a horror movie, but the film itself would have to be totally ass backwards to portray him that way. Ryuk is on screen constantly in the anime. His appearance isn't some big scary mystery. The fact that a horrific half-human monster is just floating around in broad daylight is a huge element of the series' tone, and I kind of doubt that the filmmakers could screw that up unless they'd actually never seen the source material. My guess is that in the film itself, right after this shot of a haggard light turning his head to face Ryuk, we see a full shot of Ryuk's freakish visage played to unnerving, possibly comedic effect. If that's not the case, and they really do have zero understanding of what the series is about, then yeah, this movie is almost certainly going to be crap. But with producers who know the value of the original property and a talented director at the helm, that seems unlikely at best. Despite how meh this first trailer is, and despite some potentially questionable story choices that it hints at, I'm cautiously optimistic for Netflix version of Death Note. I think the casting is solid, and despite the awful editing, the camera work and directing on display here looks gorgeous. Maybe I'm just desperate for a win because Gitz looks so damn bad. Maybe I'm overly hopeful because Netflix has a better track record with adaptation than most other studios. But I think we ought to give Death Note a chance to impress us regardless. That said, I'd love to hear what you guys think, so please leave a comment below with your take on the trailer and your thoughts on Western adaptations of anime in general. Looking at stuff like Edge of Tomorrow, I think it's possible to do these right, but it is tricky. Thanks for watching, thanks especially if you're subscribed to Mother's Basement or you support me on Patreon, and I hope to see you again in my next video, which should be coming out real soon because I think somebody wrote Dies of Overwork next to my name in a death note recently. I'm
I'm Jeff Poo, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement. <laughs>